would be helpful. It's a privilege to follow the noble Lord, Lord uh, Stevenson, and um, I greatly anticipate to the report his committee is uh, due to publish uh, next next week on this critically important area of the regulation of the uh, of the internet. It's, it's of great interest, as a, uh, as he will understand, to um, the report I'm writing for publication in the new year in my capacity as the uh, government's independent advisor on political violence and disruption, looking at the, uh, the, the far right, uh, the anti-democratic uh, far left and single issue, and potential single issue groups and the, the, the scale of the threat that they pose and, and um, measures that are leading into that. And it's clear that the issue of freedom of speech and um, the, the ways in which the internet is, can be used or misused is, is of significant importance to that. Can I say how, how struck I was by um, the Lord Sumption's uh, lecture, the, the Roger Scruton Memorial Lecture, which he gave um, just last month, on, which uh, touched at length on the issue of freedom of speech. And the point which he made which has also been uh, yeah, uh, eloquently expounded in many of the contributions already today, on the importance <laughs> of freedom of speech to the, the proper functioning of our liberal democracy, and not simply freedom of speech as an abstract concept, but the fact of the need to enable, allow, and tolerate a breadth of opinions within that speech to be able to ensure that our democracy can remain resilient and remain an actual liberal democracy, not simply a country which has elections every few years, but has that underpinning of understanding and tolerance and the ability to move, which actually makes a country a democracy. Um, I hope the I feel a little self-conscious in, in talking about a secular crisis of faith which I had in front of the most reverend prelate and probably the, uh, the, the most revered Anglican audience it is possible to, to, to have. But if, if, if he and they will indulge me, because I, I feel it is relevant. You know, I, uh, I spent most of my life as a progressive new Labour uh, youngster activist front bench um, member of parliament and now I'm here on the, on the cross benches. But uh, in uh, most of my time growing up, you know, I, I thought that the, uh, had a sort of enlightenment view on equalities, the idea that there were progressive opinions which were good and there were conservative opinions which were bad and there would be an onward march of uh, progressive um, legislation, culture change that would uh, ever increase our hum uh, hum benefits to humankind um, and, and would go on. And, and, and so in that context, I think if anyone had, had uh, engaged me and my you know, fellow New Labour acolytes on the idea of freedom of speech, we'd only, we don't, wouldn't really have had a great deal of interest in it. In fact, we've spent more time in, in um, engaging in um, no platforming demonstrations of reprehensible people who we thought shouldn't be given a, a, a platform in particular places. But I have to say that the, uh, the clash of rights, if I can call it that, and I realise that that in tell itself is a highly contested way of, of describing it, the clash of rights between people who think that the, the rights of um, biological sex um, compared to gender um, has profoundly shaken my faith in this sense of ever expanding uh, sense of right and um, as opposed to a quite clear sense of, uh, of wrong. And I, I'm, I'm really pleased that the um, Baroness Faulkner mentioned the, the plight of Professor, well, Cal Professor Kathleen Stock earlier on today. Um, and add to that the, the way in which the author J.K. Rowling um, is um, being pursued, attempts to, um, uh, to silence her, should, I think, um, profoundly con concern us and play directly into this idea that actually we need a breadth of opinion uh, in to be able to make changes and decide where we want to go to a, a society. And I think it is, 
um, it is seen as a, as a heretical and, and, a, and a entirely, um, well, sometimes as an abusive thing to say, to point out that actually many of the campaigners who are now, now wish to place um, the views expressed by the likes of Kathleen's talk and J.K. Rowling as outside the view of acceptability that should have in effect been banned were their own views 10 or 20 years ago. And that is not to say that they were wrong then and right now or right now and, and wrong then, but it's to say that actually you need that breadth of opinion to be able to understand where we want to go. And I feel that that is, is in... Uh, is, is being profoundly questioned now uh, by people who are doing so for the best of intentions but may well do very significant damage to our, uh, our democracy in, 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 in doing so. I mean, in, the, in the final minute, let me, let, let me just add, um, uh, related to that uh, partly on the online, uh, the online safety debate where... Um, it, uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm really seeking guidance from the committee and, and others in, in that, is that profound tension between who should regulate, if anyone should regulate the, the debate. And uh, I think there is, it, it, it is potentially as problematic for a government to regulate what should be within the bounds as it is for a very narrow group of people within Facebook. But neither of those, if you reject both of those things, you are still left with the, the problem of who should, of who, where should the boundaries be, what should the level of regulation be, and, and how do you go about reaching understanding. So I, I was really pleased to hear Baroness D'Souza talk so um, uh, compellingly about disinformation. And I feel that you know, too often we, we put together hate speech and misinformation and disinformation, but, but a, a greater focus from government and the state on, on who is perpetrating disinformation, which countries are doing, which organisations within, is something that I hope could unite all of us on an otherwise profoundly contested debate over where the boundaries of freedom of speech ought to lie.